All right, everybody, sorry about that little break. <laughs> and a little tech issue where we're back, so let's, let's pick up right where we left off. So, talking about socialism, right? The, the goal of complete social, economic, political equality for all. Um, now, how has this happened? Of course, because of people being what they are. Now, according to socialists, this happens because now the people, that means everybody, is collectively, democratically, Laying out all the work, all property, all land, all of it is shared in common and enforced by the people. The people, according to socialist thought, have realized there's a better way to live. So they're going to equally distribute the pizza to everybody. Everybody gets one piece. Everybody has a participation in the cooking of the pizza. Everybody gets a cup of uh, root beer, <laughs> whatever is your choice of a beverage with your pizza. Everybody equally contributes, and they have to. Everybody equally gets your slice. Nobody gets three or four slices. Everybody gets your one slice. Or maybe it's a big pizza, you get two slices. And the socialist ideal. Ultimately, the idea is a utopian future for all mankind. Because people realize this is a much better way to live. Instead of having some monstrosity of a huge palace for the rich and the wealthy, instead, every person will have a home. They have enough food to eat. They're taken care of. They're all mutually relied. This is better for everybody. We're all going to live it, it, it's such as one giant, happy, contented, equal family. That is a socialist vision. Now, maybe someone's at the table going back to the pizza analogy says, I want more than one slice of pizza. I want two or I want five pizzas. I'm a big eater. I'm hungry. According to socialist, it's not about the individual. It's not about that one person, it's not about you, it's about the whole group. So for the good of all, we equally share, equally participate. Nobody is able to, on their own, for whatever reason they have, but able to buck the system and go off and do their own thing. They have to all cooperatively, for the good of everybody, all cooperatively work together again. Think of a, a giant happy family where everybody is pulling their weight, everybody gets equally the same amount of food, the same amount of housing, the same amount of comfort, all the things are equally done because the collective group is the focus, not the individual. So, with this outlook, according to socialist vision, this is again the, the theory, problems, injustices, inequalities, class division must be completely eliminated. No more high class, low class. No, the socialist will be one unified class. Everybody in that class. All production will be handled by states. So no more Microsoft or, you know, Using these, uh, everybody would participate equally. They'd all get the same smartphone. Maybe not as smart as better than others, but no one's getting upgraded any from anybody else. You're not getting the latest edition. Everybody gets issued the exact same thing. Oh. State and government make sure, make sure this happens because, you know, people, some people, maybe not so interested in sharing their toys. Not, again, in a socialist ideal world, that's not possible because it's enforced by the people. Everyone gets the exact same equal share. That means land, housing, production, food, resources, fresh water, you name it, all completely equally given to all, as all equally have to labor for it as well, too. And finally, at the end of this lecture, socialism, actually end of part one, I should say. Socialism, the goal, a just society for all. Administered for us by the people, or by the government, right? Utopian future for all mankind. Um, That's the part two. Let's go a little more detail what we're talking about socialism. So, now socialists are split over how this new socialist vision can come into reality. Some socialists say if you simply educate people clearly, they'll understand how to do this, that why it's better to do this. Like, who wouldn't want to live in this free, fair society? And so those socialist thinkers, theorists, are you simply educate people, get them out there, realize that, that this is how people could live. It's a whole complete reorientation of life, society, economy, all those things. But it's much better for everybody. You simply have to educate people. In the classroom, clubs, books, mass meetings, etc. We simply let them know, like, hey, wake up. All human history, you've been duped into this unfair system. Realize this brand new system of socialism is far superior. It just makes plain sense. Now, other socialists say, yes, I'm all on board for the education part, but people that have the nice houses, the big pools, <laughs> the king cab on their pickup, you know, the, 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 the fifth wheel, 
you know, those people have too much and they like it and they're not going to give it up. They worked hard for it and they, as they see it now, of course, also say they exploited others, you know, it's not fair, but in any case, but they cannot have those things. They're not going to let go of those things. So honestly, you're going to have to use violence. You're going to have to use force because those people are not going to let go of the house of Malibu, the horse of, the house of Tahoe, you know, the house and, you know, the Hamptons, whatever, the extra houses, they're not going to give that stuff up. They love their private jets or whatever, you know, not going to give that up. So honestly, we can educate them all we want. If they come on board, fabulous. But if they don't, their only solution is revolutionary violence to force about that change. Us, some of them will have to die. Others of them will be converted through force and brought on board. Now, as you can see, socialism in many ways is anti-liberal. What do I mean by anti-liberal? Means remember, individual li uh, liberal means focus on individual rights, right? Socialism is not focus on individual rights. Now, they wouldn't say we focus on rights, but collective rights. Collectively, we all have equal access to these things. But it's not about your individual freedom of speech or freedom of religion. It's the collective group that's what truly matters. And obviously, socialism is anti-capitalist. They believe the capitalist system is exploitive of the, of the workers. And they're very wealthy, and the, the, the middle classes do very well, but the poor struggle. That system has to go. So by definition, the whole idea of making a profit and so forth, all that, of course, has to go away. There's no more profit now. you simply everyone equally sharing all resources across the board. Now, that is the theory of socialism. I stress theory. We're not talking about how these things actually turn out in practice. So we'll see that both for uh, socialism, the next lecture of Marxism, and the final one of anarchism, we'll focus on the theory. Now, later on, we'll get into the practice, because the theory and practice, those are two different animals in many cases. This is the theory, not talking about necessarily how it turned out. This is a theory of how socialists projected this utopian future for humanity once we go through a revolution violently, or through a democratic process, we realize it's a much better way to live, as they argue in their theory. So with that, that's good enough to get us rolling with socialism. We'll see you with the next lecture, which is Marxism.